Hello there, I'm Good Watchman, back again. Now, uh, just to put another video out. Can't sleep at the moment, so I thought I'd just use my time whilst I'm up to um, make a video. What's good about this is that uh, sometimes the American audience out there, if there are any from America who watch my videos, um, um, you get them at a much more better time, I think. I'm not quite sure. I have no idea what time it is out there at the moment. I um, I forget. But, you know, just thought I'll pop a video out. As you can clearly, uh, clearly tell now from the massive uh, text across my screen, is that this is going to be a one against Flight Earth Offensive. Now, I tried to be nice. I thought he was a genuine cool dude, to be quite honest with you. I thought he was alright. Until he started acting like a smart ass and started acting like a, a dense a dense bugger. You know, not accepting questions, not accepting anything that um, disproves his opinions. So, I'm going to stop being nice guy right about now. So, his latest video is, you know, Flat Earth, Helocentric Contradictions 2. Now, I would like to point out about his titles. Is Spread the truth, expose the lies, demand answers. The thing is that, why are you demanding answers to questions you already seem to have the answers for? You already say that everything is fake, so why do you want the answers to something you already know? Hmm? Ah oh well, you know, I digress. Alright, you know, this video is going to be maybe a bit choppy in places. You know, I might skip, I might do a few things, otherwise this video is going to end up, end up being like half an hour long. Or maybe even more, maybe an hour long if I'm not too careful. And I don't think everybody's, I don't want to put everybody to sleep. See, when I start talking too quickly, I start stuttering. And I need to stop. Calm. Right. Let's, uh... Let's start this, um... Bubbling cauldron of, uh, of weirdness. Well, thanks for tuning in to join me in this... You're bloody welcome. ...thought experiment. I'm just gonna go over some things that don't seem to make sense according to the heliocentric model. We'll call no. Uh, they don't make sense to the heliocentric model. What it is, is that they don't make sense to you. And because they don't make sense to you, you're claiming that they're wrong, or fake, or fabricated. That's exactly how journalism does it. You know, I'm not going to go into journalism right now because this video is about you, but that's exactly what they do. Is that just because things don't make sense to you doesn't make them wrong. That's something the flat earthers always do call this heliocentric contradictions part two uh, I find that when being met with opposition from the heliocentric enthusiast community heliocentric enthusiast community what you mean 99.9% .9 of the planet uh, one of the things that people will say quickly is that well you're wrong the earth is round they say that the Earth is round. Um, obviously, they mean to say spherical, but... Well, round can mean spherical. Just, it's a gen... Now you're just being picky. You're trying to find something wrong there which it doesn't exist. You're, it, you're literally just clutching a straw here to find any information to make people sound more incorrect. For some reason or another, these individuals who hold so tightly to this globe model, they... What? Uh, and you don't? You don't, you know, grasp this flat earth concept tightly? The fact that I don't see any um, globe earthers, or just let's say normal people, stick magnets and bloody posters to the side of their vehicles. You know? I mean, really? You're, you're, it's, you're the wrong person to say this crap. They won't even use the proper terminology, and yet, when we, in the Flat Earth community, uh, mis, misquote a statistic or a relative term or a definition or whatever, they're all over it. Well, we're all over it with facts. You know, and information that's been tested and has been proven to be true. Not wild ideas and opinions that have literally been pulled from the deepest recesses of your ass. 
but won't even correct something as simple as using the term spherical instead of round. Same thing. It, see, you, you know, just stop being picky, please. It's, it's not getting you anywhere. But anyway, um, you know, that's not even what this is about. It's much like when people always say flat and level, even though level does not mean flat. Something can be level and not be flat. So, uh, if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you would know that I don't believe there are any real pictures of the Earth. Well, tough shit. A uh, quick Google search will show you all these different pictures that come up, and you'll see the differences in shade of water to the size of continents. It's my belief. Well, the size of the continents thing is a perspective and distance thing. You know, basically, the closer you are, the bigger some things are going to look. It's just the way your eyes work. Now, in terms of colour, you could take pictures with various different expensive cameras, various different types of camera, and you will get different colour. You know, stick them out in the ocean, take a picture with it on, like, its default setting, and I will guarantee you that the shades of blue will probably come back slightly differently. And then you're just assuming that when they take pictures, that it's just point and click you know with uh, many of these but many of the satellites out there regardless forgetting the ones from the ISS for the time being let's think of the satellites a lot of them take pictures of different waves lengths and then you know they're adjusted to get what they want out of it and improved or changed just to you know get the necessary data from it I believe that all those pictures are CGI composites you know, the uh, this term composite, what is the f a flat earther's issue with the word composite? I mean, really, it's... Uh, why does composite seem to mean evil and fake to, to, to you? I, I just don't get it. These are artist depictions of these things that are going on out in space. Uh, there was even a NASA employee by the name of Rob Simmon who... Oh, here we go. Uh, we've all heard this quote where he says... It is photoshopped, but it's, it's, it has to be. And yet, during his description of his duties in being, uh, you know, the artist that he is for NASA in uh, putting these uh, pictures together, you know, there was also a point where he alluded to uh, the appearance of the Earth being flat. It just didn't look realistic. It looks kind of flat, looks kind of flat, looks kind of flat. Perhaps he said that because it is flat. Well, derive the term, please. It could have meant anything, that the colors were kind of flat, the shading was kind of flat due to the way the images were taken at the time. I mean, look, the this is the the... This is the Himawari satellite. This doesn't look flat, does it? Because it's a very new camera. I think it's only been in space for a couple of years. And if you want pictures, look. Here's 86.4 thousand of them for you to churn through. And obviously put through Photoshop and change the adjustments and claim that they're all fake based on your own opinion of what CGI is. Okay. Here we go. This is how the um, some early images of the Earth was were created with low orbiting satellites, weather satellites, exactly, right? And he exp this explains the reason on why, when he came up with a singular image of the Earth, why it needed to be photoshopped is due to overlapping. Okay, so here's a short little video on the day of the life of a, of a weather satellite. Bit of a crude example it's what you know gets on so you see how it scans and it misses certain bits see so here comes another kind of version of it see see how it misses bits and overlaps in in, in others so this is primarily used for data in terms of weather patterns. 
See now it's had to cover, but now look, it's the way it things it's going over certain things and overlapping. So this is why look it'll keep on going. So this is why when he made the picture it had to be photoshopped. Simple as that, you know. You need to do these little bits of research. Which is another reason why it is Photoshop. You know, because it has to be. Anyway. Um, but let's go along and say that all the pictures of the Earth from space are real. But still, let's say they are. Well, to find all. Now you're using the term picture, not images like you flat earthers like to use. And this is my prob this is my problem with you. Is and many of the flat earthers in general, you've already made your mind up on what's fake and what's real. And but you keep on asking NASA, where are these real pictures? Well, it doesn't matter what they give you, because you've already made their mind up, or you've already made your mind up that they're fake. So what's the fucking point? Oh, let me ask you, do you have any real photos of Flat Earth? That would be no. They are. Uh, the pictures of the globular Earth that we see uh, in these depictions from all these uh, space agencies around the world, NASA, JAXA, whatever, um, they all show us a perfect sphere. Right. This is basically now going to be based on Neil deGrasse Tyson. I can see it coming. Yeah, there we go. See? It's going to be Neil deGrasse Tyson when he claimed that there was no blades ferrelled. Or pear-shaped as flat earthers love to use that joke. The earth is only oblate by about 0.2%. It is not noticeable by the naked eye from any sort of distance. But it is there, which is why the Earth has never been called a perfect sphere. It's still a sphere, it's still a spheroid, but it's still it's slightly oblate, very slightly. Like in that Neil, Degra Neil deGrasse Tyson video, many flat earthers miss the opportunity to show us the part of the interview where he does say it's very slightly oblate. It's slightly oblate. You know, it's a little chubbier, slightly chubbier. You know. Oh no, but they don't mean they don't they, they don't like to show you that. You know? And when he says pear shaped, he was just having a joke. It was the first sort of visual reference that came to his head. He thought it would be funny, he said pear. He wasn't being serious. He could have said he could have said anything. It was just the first thing that popped into his head to give a sort of visual reputation to get you know, for you to see his point. And I don't want to hear any more of this Neil deGrasse Tyson thing. Okay? Because that has been explained more times than any. Thing happened on the way to the moon. I would encourage it. Funny thing happened on the way to the moon. Well, we can look at a quick scene from that, uh, showing how they faked that picture. Take was never used. As they perfected the shot, a crescent-shaped piece of black material was inset slightly into the window to create the illusion of the Earth's terminator line dividing night and day. Now, this is a whole different barrel of eggs. Or a basket of eggs, I should say, right? Or a whole different kettle of fish. Is that the conspiracy in the terms of the moon landing, I, I can totally get people's... You know, I can... Pe getting, people getting behind it. You know, it's got loads of uh, interesting kind of concepts and ideas to why they would have faked the first moon landing. You know, political pressure, getting there before Russia, military issues, you know. Um, the fact they would have faked it, the fact they didn't have the technology at the time to actually get there, you know, and all this kind of thing. But it raises the question, right, if they faked the first one, fine. But why would they then fake it nine more times? I honestly do think they went. But, like I said, even if it does come out that it was faked, and I very highly doubt that it will, even if it did come out as being faked, it that has no basis on the shape of the Earth at all. That's purely a technological barrier that they had at the time. And that, if, I've, if I were one, if that was the case, I would try to continue to hide that as much as I possibly, much as you possibly can, seeing the fact on um, how much of an historic moment it was. 
and still is. But I digress, and I'm going to move on from that, because that's a totally different argument again. Right, hopefully I can move on to another part of the video. Um, now, the next contradiction kind of dovetails off of that one. Uh, we'll talk about relativity versus the axial tilt. Now yes, because he's a master of relativity. He's probably read every single book on on relativity. He's probably well versed in it as he starts to talk about it. Now, as far as uh, relativity goes, when I talk to people about how it's not possible for large masses of water to be held to the bottom of a spin... Um, not possible. You haven't given any reasons why. You can't just dismiss gravity, but never mind. Ball, ...they'll take out the word bottom and say that, well, bottom entails that there is actually an up or down out in space and because we're on earth and because we're out in space they say that relativity applies and that gravity this magical unseen force pulls all things towards the center of the earth now i love it when flat earthers say magical unseen force like that's supposed to mean something take magnetism for example Without these flecks of metal, you can't see the force of magnetism. Okay? You can't see it at all. It's only when you put the metal flakes there that you start to see the forces involved in magnetism. Other than that, magnetism is completely invisible. You can't feel it at all. Without the metal showing you the fields that are around. This is school book stuff. This is primary school stuff. But flat earthers don't seem, seem to have a problem with magnetism. But magnetism is the same as gravity in that sense. We, we can't see it, but we can see what it does. We can see what it affects. Hell, gravity can be measured. Do you people not understand that? That there are devices around nowadays that can measure gravity all over the earth. And they can be measured to quite meticulous detail. But Never mind, it doesn't understand, it, that doesn't seem to matter to you people. Because of that, and uh, the coupling of general relativity, everywhere you go, it, it's, it's always up and down on the globe. Everything's being pulled towards the core, so there is not really an up or down. It's all relative, they say. And yet, they won't, they won't pick apart what Neil said about things being chubbier at the bottom, because he uses the word bottom also in his description of this pear-shaped earth that we've never had pictures of. Which we have, but just because you think they're fake doesn't mean they are. So his words go against the idea of general relativity because, well, actually, let me back up. The pictures that we've gotten from all these space agencies, because they always show the North Pole at the top and the south pole at the bottom of the globe they always take these pictures as being right side up well now you're just being picky again what this is is the sort of accepted sort of direction this accepted model basically when they f started to do north and south they were generally accepted that north was up and south was down which is why maps are seen that way so that's why they say that go up the map you get to the north pole go down the map you get to the south pole and this is why we see this as being top and bottom then they added this sort of thing to the globe with its um, with its tilt can't see a good picture at the moment of that but let's just take some of that so when they dissected that um you know and dissected the Makeda map and then when astronomy got uh, much more elaborate they made um, you know, the globes and everything at, uh, at good detail after things were mapped. They took in that. They kept the direction of up and down. Because there needs to be a model to make it easier to understand. You know, if they started selling maps that were tilted in certain ways, it, things will get a bit of a problem. For example, if they started selling globes 
um, in shops and the North Pole was tilted to its side or the North Pole was pointing down, things will start getting a bit confusing. So they decided to settle upon a kind of accepted direction. You know? Of the accepted direction. Just to make things easier to teach, easier to learn. Okay, so that's just the way it goes. It's got nothing to do with conspiracy. As if we, as we see them in textbooks, you know. Uh, well, exactly, because it's the accepted direction, like, like I've just talked about. North America's always here, and then Canada's above that. You got South America down here, right across the Atlantic. Hell, you know, things could have ended up differently. Years ago, they could have decided that uh, South was up and North was down. Then the Earth would have been tilted the other way. But it's just the way things are. This is the accepted sort of direction. Atlantic, you have Africa, and there's the thicker part of Africa at this point, and then the slimmer. This image again, different types of cameras, dude. Part towards the bottom. It's always north to south. How we uh, see orientation of these spherical pictures from the. Like I said, it's north to south, which is generally accepted on a map. North was up, south was down. It's how we've decided to learn things so we've taken that to the global scale so we've decided to orientate uh, our images uh, photos and understandings of the universe and of the galaxy as from at a start point from the direction of our planet uh, uh, trusted space agencies well that goes against relativity too also seeing as how there's not supposed to be any up or down, but it's odd, or it, you know, raises a red flag that we all... No, it doesn't. You're, you're raising questions here that don't need to be there. You're just being picky. Like I said, it's very easy to understand this. It's very easy to understand why we have the model the way it is. Always see those pictures as presented as if there is an actual up and down. We get those pictures that show us general up and down from the space agencies and Neil deGrasse Tyson uses the term bottom uh, as he describes a pear-shaped earth that we've never actually seen. Yes, we have. That's not actually pear-shaped. He was fucking taking the piss. But relativity says there is no actual up or down. Still with me? Good. Now, let's talk about... No, you lost me ages ago. Another thing. Uh... Axial tilt. Um, this... Now, in terms of, basically, let's put it this way. Let's use this little ball as an example. Okay? Now, when you look at this ball, there is no definitive up or down. There's no definitive side to side. There's nothing. However, you could, um, to basically make things easier, to make it more of a recognisable image, we're just going to say, for Sod's Law at the moment, that red and purple is going to be the top, and yellow and green is going to be the bottom. So yellow and green is going to be south, red and purple is going to be north. So if this was, let's say, from the terms of a map or a globe, that's how we're going to always depict it. That's how we're always going to show it. Are you following me here, dude? You dig? You know, it's, it's just that simple. So basically, from now on in, but due to my... Thing I'm, I would like to um, think so. If I wanted this to be taught this color for any sort of inexplicable reason, I'm always going to say, right, this is the top. This is how it's going to be oriented. That's how I want it to be learned. Okay, that's just that concept here. Okay. Now, I will also want to address something about flat earthers' sort of idea of evidence and proof. Now, lots of flat earthers seem to think that when they get an evidence, when they get evidence that it's actually 100% solid proof. Well, no, evidence is not proof. Let me give you an analogy here, right? I can write you a check right now for $300 million, 300 million pounds, whatever, okay? Now, me writing that check is evidence that I'm a multimillionaire, However, 
It's not proof that I'm a millionaire until that check is cashed. You, you, you get you get me on that? Okay, that's just a quick sidetrack there on on my idea for that, but you know. This particular uh, detail of the heliocentric model comes up um, in rebuttals to uh, my uh, video calls um, with uh, Matt and Luke. Matt was in the UK, Luke was in Australia, and uh, one thing that uh, the would-be debunkers like to... Um, would-be debunkers? So you're, you're an expert on all this, are you? would be debunkers what you're doing here is just dismissing what people are saying based on the fact that you just don't agree with them point two is axial tilt yes axial tilt well done um those things are being taken care of by a guy's channel's name is the bloody truth taken care of you know this guy has been debunked no matter um, how undebunkable he claims that it is. Uh, you should check him out. Uh, he's been doing some great work uh, in defending those uh, those videos. Uh, I'll probably mirror mirror his videos here pretty soon. He's doing some pretty detailed work concerning those video calls. But I digress. Now, the axial tilt of the Earth, the globe Earth, supposedly is 23.4 degrees. Eh, 23 and a half, right around there. You know, take 23.4 away from 90 degrees, then you're left with 66.6, .6, which can be a slight indicator as to who we're dealing with concerning this whole heliocentric deception. Again, I digress, but I enjoy doing that. Um, so this... It's not about what you enjoy doing, though, dude. It's about the facts. Um, however, that it's just a coincidence, as I explained before. And however, there is actually a th saying that basically the actual real number of the devil is 616. The reason why 666 is probably stuck around so long is it sounds cooler and looks cooler when you write it down. But, never mind. This axial tilt. You know, an angle, in order for an angle to be achieved, now, uh, you, you have 23.4 degrees. A measurement uh in degrees is based upon a plane angle that's how you get degrees in order to, for me to be standing up standing straight up at 90 degrees that would mean there would have to be a base here then I, I like the fact that you you thought it necessary to demonstrate this like you're teaching like a like a load of two-year-olds i stand at 90 degrees um but out in space there's no up or down now, is there? You know, I'm not sure exactly what we're basing the axial tilt off of. Wait a minute. This is where people would say, well, we're, we're talking about the orbital ecliptic because the Earth spins. It, it's, it's like there's a axial plane out there. They kind of flattened out, flattened out the uh, whole solar system to create this axial tilt, which is odd. But what's odd? You're not explaining what's odd. But still, you know, I I think that's bogus. Uh, it sounds. Give me reasons why it's bogus. You just you're claiming that it's bogus mainly on your opinions here. Like a bunch of BS to uh, justify other BS, in my. No, it's not there to justify another BS. It's just there. Opinion. Uh, you flatten out the solar system in, t in order to create this 23.4 degree axial tilt although at the same time you'll tell me while out in space everything is relative there is no up no no no, no. it you're missing the point here what is what you see the um, galaxy here right this is the solar system not the galaxy sorry this is the solar system there's the earth the uh, we're basing the axial tilt okay based on the orbital plane you've just said that and yet you've dismissed it now the orbital plane is the path we take around the sun okay now due to observations from centuries years worth th hundreds maybe even thousands years worth of astronomy we've figured basically the orbit that we take around the sun and we figured out the orbits of the other planets 
So basically, based on the direction and how we circle the Earth, that's our orbital plane. That's where the 23.4 degree tilt is then situated. You know, okay? You just said that, but then dismiss it based on nothing. And as you can clearly see from this depiction, other planets have a and have completely different um, axial tilts. Mars is pretty much pointing at twenty three point four, by the looks of it here. Saturn pretty much the same. Uranus seems to be at at um, at another ninety degrees actual tilt. You know, and, um, Pluto. Don't know what the hell's going on there. And Neptune seems to be pretty much the same as the Earth in some very similar way. Venus seems to be, its pole seems to be uh, shifted. You know? Now, this sort of thing is very easy just to look up. I mean, how quick do you think they came up with our understanding of astronomy? Astronomy was not just thought of overnight. Hundreds and thousands of years worth of observations carefully and meticulously detailed and put together over time up down left or right that's what you tell me to justify water sticking to the bottom of a spinning ball which is another just ridiculous thing that people believe but it's not what we believe it's it's just what is you see the contradiction there if everything's relative and there's no up or down out in space how exactly in the blue blazes do you establish an axial tilt without any base there's no base in space I do rhyme from time to time in <laughs> you're very funny yes again this is the accepted direction this is the accepted orientation in which we give it's easier to learn it's easy to teach it's easier to understand it this way and you've just you just came up you just mentioned the orbital plane which is the circle that we take around thing. It doesn't matter if that orbital plane is basically tilted at, if this doesn't matter if that orbital plane, right, is at 90 degrees, or it's done a completely, you know, it's done a complete 180, or it's, it, it's tilted at 90 degrees to the left, or 90 degrees to the right. That orbital plane remains the same. You know, the orbital plane, it's still the plane. So, depending on the direction, you know, the planet would still have a 23.4 degrees actual tilt. This is just the direction. It's easier to understand, it looks nicer this way, and it's less confusing when it's set at a standard. You know? You're just, you're just trying to make things sound more complicated than it actually is. To try and make you sound like you're finding holes in something. Anyway, um, you know, what's, what's the Earth sitting, resting upon to create this tilt? It's not what it's resting upon. <sighs> and a another thing that uh, I thought about here was that... Uh, another thing you've just, you've just thought of that's complete BS. Um, gosh, the sun's kind of bright out here. Uh, another thing well, that shit, I uh, consider... Is. With this whole axial tilt, relativity, fake pictures of space thing is. Oh, so, grief. if, in fact, we are tilted on our axis at 23.4 degrees, the Earth is always depicted in these official photos uh, of this spherical globe Earth. They always have the globe Earth straight up and down there's always north and south it's never at that 23.4 degree axis tilt so i guess that means that all the satellites that take these pictures of the earth from space are all also orbiting at 23.4 degree uh, quite, yeah a lot of satellites do orbit um literally the same way they orbit with the earth spin a lot of other satellites do not now your claim that there is no pictures of earth at that 23.4 degrees actual tilt is a little bogus. Let me just go on this. You know, some of the that's showing a 23.4 actual tilt. Some of the, a lot of these are. 
You know? Maybe some of them, maybe most of them aren't. But that's, you know, besides the point. I think that one is. That one possibly is. Yeah, yeah, you know. You're just making stuff up here. You haven't looked hard enough. You're basing probably all of your assertions here off these pictures alone. I have Africa and there's the... So I'll go back to that. Uh, round versus spherical in the terminology. Uh, they can both mean the same thing. It's just how people perceive it to think. It's like you never call... Now, your map here, exact for example, right? You used... you. This is a round picture. But you people only ever use flat. But you can use both. Like we use both. Like like the term, you can go around a ball. Around a sphere. I don't understand where your objections to using the term round comes from. Spherical pictures versus oblate spheroid rhetoric. Like I said, it's not rhetoric. It's just the fact that have you looked up how much it is oblate by? The Earth is only oblate by 0.2%. It is not noticeable. But it, it's still there because it's been measured. By old Neil. And the whole I. And actually, no, it's not by Neil. Newton theorized that the Earth was oblate. Way back then, way back about 500 years ago. Neil deGrasse Tyson didn't come up with this. This has been... The Earth being oblate has been a well-known... Um, well-known idea for quite some time. But unfortunately to you Flat Earthers, you just put Neil deGrasse Tyson as the face of this. So it's easier for you to make jokes about it. Idea of relativity versus... Axial tilt, which is based upon... What do you mean, relativity versus axial tilt? Do you actually know what relativity is? Some sort of foundation, but there's no foundation out in space, other than this imaginary foundation foundation that they uh, contrived. Uh, and pretty much looking at what's going on out there and doing some reverse calculations to justify. What do you mean reverse calculations? What what calculations have you come up with that basically justify what you're looking at at night? The ancient Greeks sorted this shit out. So did the Aztecs, so did people for thousands of years. What are you basing your calculations on? What calculations do you have that claim that what um, observes as our orbit and, you know, um, our astronomy as being reverse calculated? What are you basing these on? You're talking out your ass, man. The nonsense that they push upon us. So Again, you can think that as much as you want, dude, but obviously your opinions are getting in the way here. So, that's all I got for this one. Uh, well, good grief, thanks for that. Well, it did end up being nearly 40 minutes long. But never mind, that's just another video just for me to kill some time tonight and hopefully uh, make myself tired to go to bed because it is... 20 past 2 in the morning. Oh, I should be in bed. I should have taken a nap. I've got work to do, but never mind. I find this quite enjoyable. Alright. So, uh, that'll be it for me now. Please like and subscribe. Uh, pass on these um, videos. And um, I'll see you all again. Good night, or good morning, as the case may be now. And I'll see you again. Goodbye.